I love math. Um, it's one of my favorite subjects. I really don't like math. It's rather boring to be completely honest. I'm not. I don't really like math that much. More of a history guy, and math doesn't really have that many applications for me. I'm gonna have to be honest with you. Um, I hate math. Hi, my name is Amanda Morrell. My vision to become a math teacher has become a life goal and is becoming reality. My most difficult challenge was to zero in on the age of the student I most wanted to work with and subject matter I wanted to teach. Math. 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 I have a strong desire to make differences in children's lives. I feel my passion for teaching math would be enhanced by building a comfortable environment in the classroom where I can help students master the math material. I want to help children expand their learning horizons by helping them to believe in their ability to achieve. You know, you can always work towards an answer, and there's always a goal to work towards, and it just is really satisfying when you get the right answer, so that's why I love math. I feel that one of the most important aspects to my students' success in the mathematics classroom is their long-term retention. In order to better myself as a mathematics teacher, I feel that figuring out the answer to my question will help my students' success tremendously. So here's my question. What factors promote long-term retention in the American High School mathematics classroom? So what do I mean by retention? A major goal of education is to help learners store information in long-term memory and to use that information on later occasions in order to effectively solve problems. There are actually three different types of long-term memory. Episodic memory, which refers to our ability to recall personal experiences from our past. Semantic memory, which refers to facts and generalized information. Procedural memory, which refers to the ability to remember how to perform a task or employ a strategy. I'm more of a visual learner. I like it when teachers do examples like on the whiteboards or if I come in after school or something for extra help, that always, like, you know, I like the one-on-one -on -one help from teachers. Take team tests before an actual test, um, working with other people, it helps me know what I didn't know before the test. In order to organize my research, I broke the factors into three categories. Number one, teaching strategies and techniques. Number two, classroom environment. And number three, brain memory and process. So my first category, which was teaching strategies and techniques, would be the teaching style, the style of the teacher and how they teach. Some methods that they may use, such as active learning or mastery learning. My trick teacher last year, he put a song to the quotient rule to help us learn uh, how to solve derivatives. Discussion versus lecture in the classroom. Days before a test in math, we play math ball, And that's where, if you answer a question right, you get to take a shot. And if you make the shot, you get candy. And I really wanted candy. So I worked hard to answer the questions correctly. So my second category for factors was the classroom environment. What I mean by the classroom environment is that I want to study the difference in the length of the classrooms, whether it's block scheduling, semester classes, and your classes. I also want to look at the number of students in each class, if this truly affects you know, the student to faculty ratio. So my third category was brain, memory, and process. What I mean by this is I want to understand how the brain learns math. I also understand the brain memory and how it retains information. Most effective methods that could help the brain retain information. Just reading from the textbook or doing like problems is like, you know, it's, it doesn't seem to do as much. So when the teacher gets up there, does things on the board, I can see it visually, it really puts it in my mind. And I get the concepts pretty well. If I was given this amazing opportunity to research, I would begin by using my surrounding resources, like OhioLink through my Cuyahoga Public Library. Ohio Link would allow me to request any publication or book in any university in the state of Ohio. Another way that would be just beneath my fingertips to study would be the ERIC website, Educational Resources Information Center. This website is strictly just for teachers and educators. It is filled with information, articles, publications, um, studies, research, you name it. I would begin by traveling to the many school systems in the Dayton area to observe teachers and students in classrooms, observe the different math programs, and compare and contrast the different school systems in the area. I would then travel to schools across America and study their math programs in order to find the most effective ways that students retain information. Alan Schoenfeld is a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. Two of his famous works include How We Think and Mathematics Problem Solving. I would love to have the opportunity to travel to California and interview Mr. Schoenfeld and really gain as much knowledge as possible as I can from him in order to better myself as a teacher and to also learn a lot from his qualifications and amazing experiences. I'm very excited to research the answer to my question because I feel that it will help my students retain the mathematics material more effectively, as well as gain a curiosity and love for learning. I hope that it will not only assist me to become the best teacher I could possibly be, but to also be used as a great resource to American high school mathematics teachers and the mathematic programs used in school systems across America.